Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Every time I film a video, I say hello to the camera about 10 times before I actually say my intro. So, I just want you to know what you're missing out on. You have already missed out on about 50 versions of me saying, Hello. Welcome to my channel. But today, I am here to show you how to get a very natural, fresh looking makeup look without looking like you're completely made up. So this video is not for the makeup obsessed, this is not for the makeup experience, this is not for the woman that spends a crap ton of money on makeup every year, this is for the woman that never wears makeup. You are natural face every day, more power to you, you have no interest in makeup, you don't spend your money on that kind of stuff, totally understandable, totally fine, totally respectable. But if there ever comes a day where you feel like you need to be a little bit more made up, either you have a job interview or you have a wedding to go to or some sort of like professional headshot to take, this is going to be like the bare minimum of makeup and the bare minimum of steps and skills and how you can look a little bit more put, pulled together. This, even this look, which is the finished look, this is even the most made up version of what I'm going to tell you. There's an even lighter version of this. So just keep watching, it's super easy. I made sure to use all drugstore products and as few steps as possible to make this super duper user friendly. So if this is something that you think you're interested in or if you just wanna watch me on your camera or if you just wanna watch me on your TV, your computer, then keep on watching. Let me pull my hair out of my face. Um, this is Holland's. I found this at Walmart yesterday in the Halloween section for $3 and it may just end up being mine. I may just keep it for my makeup use. Okay, I feel like that's a good look. To start off, if you are trying to do your makeup just to look a little bit more put together and presentable but you don't necessarily care whether or not you look like you have on makeup. I would say the three things that you truly need and the only three things that you truly need are some form of concealer, some kind of color for your cheeks and your lips, and a mascara. And actually technically now that I'm thinking about it, it's more like five things. Whatever. We'll get into it. But I am also going to show you a couple extra added things that you can do if you do enjoy the process of putting on makeup, it's just not something that you normally do. Um, I can, I'm going to show you some extra steps as far as like contouring your face but in like a super simple, easy peasy way, not like a YouTube beauty vlogger way. So with that said, the very, very first thing you need to do, especially if, I mean just in general, the, I think the key to having like a pretty mug is skincare. So that's going to be so different and personalized dependent, depending on your personal skin type, but for me I find that just a really good light moisturizer is the best way to start off my day and the best kind of foundation to get going with my makeup process. I have I've talked about it a few times before, but this Neutrogena Hydro Gel Boost Cleanser is my absolute favorite. This is what I use every day. This is what I put on my face this morning. Well, actually about 15 minutes ago. It's not the morning anymore. So put this on, give it a second to kind of sink in and it's just going to kind of like plump up your face a little bit and give it a smoother texture to work with for the makeup to lay on top of. And that really genuinely puts you like light years ahead in terms of how good your makeup looks on your skin is if it has a good canvas to work on. So moisturize first. Um, the second and probably like the most key component here is a concealer. So my opinion is that if you're trying to go for a new makeup look, you don't want to buy a heavy concealer. You want something light and easy to blend out and very similar to your skin tone. One of my favorites is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer that you can find at the drugstore. It's pretty inexpensive compared to fancier concealers. It's not high coverage, but it does give you just enough coverage to sort of get rid of this. And it also will help to brighten things up a little bit. So. You definitely want to try to match it best to your skin tone, best to whatever is going on in your neck and your body. That is like a whole other skill that I'm not sure how to teach someone to match their skin tone. 
Um, but I'd say the best tip is to make sure you're matching your body, not your face, because it could be a completely different tone, and then you go out with your face being kind of looking almost separated from the rest of your body. And make sure you're using daylight. The light in the store and the light in your bathroom is not going to work for accurate makeup application. So I always do my makeup next to my window. Um, I just pop down in front of the mirror. I'll even sometimes move the mirror next to the window with my bag of makeup and do it there. It's the best light. It's the only light that's going to give you a true representation of how crazy or how amazing you look. So I'm going to start and put some concealer on. Since this is a no foundation look, I am going to take this a little bit further than you would normally with just like a little under eye because I want it to not only cover my under eye and my blemishes, but I also want to use it to just kind of be even out my skin tone in general. So I'm going to place it under my eye. I'm going to do this little triangle thing that you've probably seen everyone everywhere do. And essentially, when we start to buff it in, it is going to go everywhere, all over your skin, but you want to apply it in the areas that it's going to be the most concentrated. I always do this chin area because this is where I break out the most. I'm looking off to the sides, that's where my mirror is. And then just a little bit on the forehead to sort of balance out the color. So I can tell you right now, I don't know how it looks on camera, but I can see in the mirror that this is pulling a lot more like red toned than my actual skin. So for applying it, you can totally use your fingers, that's fine. I would not go in a swiping motion, I would do more of like a patting motion. Or you can apply it with a brush or a blending sponge. This is a, such a well-loved brush, as you can tell. I have like 50 of these, they're from Wet n Wild, you grab them at the drugstore, Walmart, Rite Aid, wherever. It's like a flat kabuki style brush, it's very dense but also very soft. And it costs about $3, I think, unless they've gone up in prices. It used to be like $1.99. This is a beauty blender, not a beauty blender, it's a beauty blending sponge that cost $1 from shopmissa.com. I can link it for you down below. I bought a few of these just to kind of test them out and see if you could really get a good blender for a dollar. And what I noticed is the first try, it was kind of eh, but the second or third try, I started to really love it. And now I think this is my go-to blending method. Um, it's a much thicker kind of rubber than a beauty blender, so I had to like really wash it a couple of times to kind of like get it to the optimum squishy level. But that's great. I think I may do like half of my face with this and half of my face with the brush. So. In both of these cases, you never want to swipe because what that's doing is moving the concealer away from where you want it. So what you do is you tap, and as you tap, both the brush and the blender are going to pick up an amount, a small amount of the product, and it will redistribute it across the rest of your face. So that's how it works. And it's also how it gives it a more natural looking finish because it's taking away any excess product that could make you look cakey or crazy, like you have on a ton of makeup. I do swipe it on my neck just because it's not, it doesn't have to be as detailed down there. to the other side with this brush. So it is a tapping motion still. And then once you kind of, if you do come across an area that's being a little stubborn, you can start to buff in this motion and that will thin it out a little bit. Now that you've done that, your face is evened out, any kind of like red tones or dark spots or scarring you may have should look a little more blended in, even if it isn't fully covered. Um, and so, this is where things are going to, are beginning to divert as far as 
what you want to do and how much time and effort you want to put in. If you don't have a ton of time, I really love uh, cream blushes. So this one's from Juice Beauty, but there are drugstore brands that make a lot of products like this. Um, you will put this on before you put on any kind of powder product, otherwise it'll get kind of like weird and patchy. So you can use a brush with it if you want. I usually just take my finger in it. And this is a very natural looking shade. It's called, it's the color Flush. It's natural, it's not super pinky. And I just sort of like dab it on this sort of like epicenter of the smile area. Do it on both sides. And then to blend it out, you'll take either your brush or your beauty blender and you'll move it around a little bit. And this is obviously not going to look like you have on a ton of blush, but it is going to give your cheeks some color so there is dimension to your face. And it's not just a big flat nothing. Now, if you are just done and this is where you want to stop, that's totally fine. I would recommend, however, that you put on just at least a tiny touch of powder so this will last you a little bit longer. A very good cheap one is the Rimmel, the, Rimmel, the Rimmel Stay Matte. This is just the transparent shade. It looks like this at the store. This is obviously well loved as well. Um, just take like... Oh! Oh, it broke. Okay. Just take a very tiny amount and start in the areas where you put your concealer. Don't start where the blush is. Start in the concealer areas. And then once you've hit all of those, you can go over this blush area with just whatever is left over on your brush. That way, you're less likely to completely cancel out the color that you put on your cheeks. This is going to help it last longer throughout the day. And it's also going to help it to stay in place. So if you normally just apply cream products without setting them with any kind of foundation, then you notice throughout the day that you have like random patches in your skin or you know your blush is kind of like shifted a little bit. It helps so much just to set it with a powder. So that would be a great place to stop if you are not wanting to do any other steps. You could just add your mascara and maybe a little bit of lip something and you're good to go and looking great. If you want a little bit of extra dimension to your face and you're kind of interested in the concept of bronzing and contouring and highlighting and all that, and you're kind of interested in the concept of bronzing and contouring and highlighting, then a really great product which I have talked about a million times is from Rimmel. It's from the Kate Moss collection. This is in the shade Coral Glow, but it's giving you a very natural looking blush, a light kind of ashy shaded bronzer, and a very natural looking highlighter. So after you've put your powder on, you don't want to go in with this straight over the cream products because then it can start to get caught up and look patchy again. Use a powder brush or anything that gives you a little bit of a softer touch and a softer angle rather than this dense flat brush because this will also kind of get you tripped up and looking crazy. So I'm just going to use this since this is what I already used and I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. And I'm going to go in with this center bronzing shade and you do the little three shape that you see everyone do. Start it right here under the hollow of your cheekbone, like you can feel where your cheekbone stops right there. And I'm putting the lightest amount of pressure on my skin because I don't want it to look like I have on a ton of makeup. Take more of it and do it same exact thing on the other side. Another good thing to think about when you're doing this step is something that always is a problem for me is right on the edge of the hairline there will be kind of like a little white negative space where the makeup isn't really getting. And so I usually try to go into the hairline with it to cover that and to just make it look more seamless and natural, like your skin is just really this color. So if you are interested in adding a highlighting element to your face, 
Since this is such a natural looking shade, I would truthfully just go in with your finger. It's a powder, it's not a cream, but you're just gonna kind of like lightly tap it. You don't wanna push and pull anything like that that's gonna move around your other products. Just lightly tap it on the height of your cheekbone. You can go down the tip of your nose. I also like to kind of do right here above my eyebrow. And then if you find that it's not placed down very seamlessly or if it looks a little choppy, you can then take that same powder brush and just sort of lightly sort of buff it in a little bit more. And then we're getting into another blush if you want to add more color. This is a very pretty natural corally pink shade. You can even do a touch, I wouldn't go in straight from touching the blush, but after you've hit your cheeks, you can take what's left over on your brush and go back in the same places where you kind of added highlight and that can give you the same effect as having been in the sun and having just a little bit of, just the tiniest bit of a sunburn, like a chic sunburn, because that is a thing, totally. Now this would be the end of your face makeup. And then all you have left is mascara, and then if you feel so inclined, something for your lip. If you do feel like you just really want to be extra, setting spray is great for making your face look more natural. Right now we have on a ton of powder products on our face, and they can tend to, especially if you have a lot of peach fuzz, they can tend to look very powdery and very much like you have makeup on. And a setting spray is a great way to get rid of that powdered look and to make things look more natural again. A really good drugstore one is the Milani Make It Last Spray. An even cheaper really good one is the Wet n Wild Finishing Spray. I don't know if this is just new packaging or if it's a brand new product, but I've noticed now they have one that says it's the Photo Focus Natural Finish Spray. And this has been my go-to. I've already gone through four bottles of this this month. Um, but definitely do this before you put on mascara because if you wait until you do after you do the mascara, you're running the risk of it getting wet again and touching your eyelid and just going everywhere. Um, after you apply it, you can either just let it dry, you can find something to fan it with to help it really kind of seal in. Something that I very often do is take my beauty blender and just go back in and sort of like stamp that finishing spray into my face. Personally, I found that that's something that works great for me. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's always the right thing to do with every single makeup product, but this works pretty well for me. So I stamp it back in, and this gives you a more luminous, natural look to your face rather than powder everywhere. So for mascara, a really great drugstore mascara to try is the Voluminous Lash Paradise from L'Oreal. Something I've been using a lot lately when I want to have a little bit of lip color but don't want to look like I have on lipstick is this NYX Whipped Formula. This is in the shade Pink Cloud. It's a very pretty pink. This looks a lot brighter and more intimidating than it actually is once you get it on your lips because it is such a light whipped formula. I will just take it and put it on like one lip, like bottom or top lip. and then you rub it in and if it's still too much take your finger and you can wipe away any extra any excess and now your lips have a tint to them and it gives your face a little bit more dimension like a little bit more to look at without having like anything super crazy or drying or even anything super glossy on your lips this is a great formula definitely check it out and that's really all there is to it. So like I said, if you are looking for the least amount of steps possible, you can completely skip that Rimmel palette with the blush and the bronzer and the highlight. All you need is a nice lightweight concealer 
a something to blend it out with. You need a powder to set that down with, some form of blush, whether it is a cream blush that you put on before you powder or it's a powdered blush that you put on after, and then some mascara and some lips. Um, it really is super easy for those of you that wear makeup every day, you're like, okay, whatever, this is not monumental news. If you never wear makeup, this could possibly seem a little intimidating because it does sound like it's a decent amount of steps, but it's really so easy. And all the products I showed you are drugstores. This should be super expensive. It should be nothing that breaks your bank. And it's just enough to kind of help you feel a little bit more, I don't know, professional or put together, or whatever the word is that you're looking for that day. If you have a wedding to go to or you're going to a meeting or a job interview, what have you. Um, or if you don't like makeup at all and you really just don't ever want to wear it, that is totally cool too. You do what you love and what makes you feel good about yourself. If it's makeup, great. If it's not, also great. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to link every single product that I used in the description box below this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel so you can check out every video that I upload. I'm going to be trying to get up a few more over this next, over these next couple of weeks. I have kind of an interesting one where I'm going to tell you some weird tricks that I do for beauty that may make you rethink the way you think about me. So anyway, stay tuned for that. You'll definitely want to subscribe so you'll know when I post that. Um, and that's it. I hope you have a great day and I love you and thank you so much for watching and bye bye.